This video, uh, pardon my voice because I am sick, but I'm still gonna make a video for you all. So you might be wondering why I'm out in the middle of a field here. I said in my last video that I was gonna go ahead and reveal what we've been up to working on behind the scenes. So we had to start here to uh, let you see exactly what we're doing. Alyssa and I have decided to sell almost everything we own and move in to this. We bought a brand new 2023 Keystone Montana 3763 BP, which I will show you what that BP stands for, but I'm gonna take you on a tour of it today. We are getting it ready to move to its permanent home. We have stored it here for the last couple months, so we gotta get it all ready to go, put the slides in, make sure everything on the inside is secure. I figured while I'm doing that, I might as well give you a tour. We're gonna walk over to the front door here. Unless is gonna hand me the keys. This is one of the first upgrades that we did. It's highly recommended by a lot of people in the RV space that have done this for a while. So we swapped out the lock with the RV lock because many of these RVs use the same keys. So you wanna get something that will keep you secure. Well, what's cool about this is you can either do the code or it's got a cool little key fob so I can just unlock it just like that. I also went ahead and put the ring doorbell on it already. So once we are set up in our permanent spot and have internet, we'll be able to monitor just like at home. We have a, at our sticks and bricks house, we have a video doorbell. So let's get inside. All right, so coming up on in here, we'll probably have to get some lights on and take my sunglasses off. You walk in, one of the first things we've also done is we went ahead and we took out the dinette, bought a butcher block countertop from Home Depot. I stained it and finished it, and that's now our nice workspace. Melissa works from home occasionally, and so will I. So this will be a nice big desk for both of us to work on. And then spinning around is our new kitchen. We've already upgraded the faucet to a much nicer faucet. We have a Norcold. This is not a 12 volt fridge, but it will run on electricity and propane. And then that BP in the name stands for Butler's Pantry. In this sister model of this RV, this is a half bath, but because it's gonna just be the two of us, we figured we didn't need a half bath. Let me turn the light on. So we have plenty of storage space in here. And then on this side too, tons of cabinets all the way to the top. Then a nice little coat rack here. We can hang stuff on, we can hang our keys up here. There's our nice little pet photo of all our pets. So let's move on to the front. This is a front living room situation here. Up here in the front, what we're gonna do is move our TV in here, but this does have a televator in it, so the TV will come up out of there. I don't know if I can show, I don't know if that runs off the 12 volt. Let's find out together. Oh, it sure does. So there you go, that TV rises up out of there like that. I'm not gonna put it all the way up, you get the point. But we're taking our nice bigger TV from home for now, since we're gonna be stationary for a while. We're not gonna be moving around. It's got a nice big electric fireplace here. I can't turn it on again, cause we're not hooked up, but it lights up different colors, just like in our small camper. It'll provide electric heat, JBL sound system, which unfortunately I'm not really impressed with right now. We have these two slide outs in the front. And both of these sofas are sleepers, though I don't know anyone who would actually sleep on them. They don't seem very comfortable. And then for us, nice theater seating, powered recliners, all that good stuff. So then we'll move on into the back where the magic happens. <laughs> no magic so in the back is the bedroom but what we have done this model came with a king size bed which took up this entire slide and we didn't like that so we are we sold the mattress that came with it and we are actually going to just bring our queen size mattress in here and put it in here so i went ahead and trimmed down the uh, platform which gave us a lot more room on both sides neither one of us are very small people so the more room we have the better we did go ahead and upgrade well i don't want to say upgrade but 
it was prepped for the washer and dryer so we went ahead and got a washer and dryer so we don't have to go to the laundromat the only bad thing is it takes up half your closet so we did lose half our closet but when i show you outside we still have a decent amount of storage space on this one there's your typical under bed storage we don't know what we're going to put under there for now but right now the extra dining chairs and the central vac hose is in there swinging around to the back here small tv that we can watch from bed we were going to bring our bedroom tv in here that we have in our home but i think it's too big it might have had to end up going down here or something and i don't know well, I, I don't know what we're doing with that yet we're just going to use this one but what i am going to do is hook our sound bar up to this we got six drawers here which of course we are definitely having to pare down. We have rented a storage unit and what we'll probably end up doing is swapping our clothes from winter to summer, leaving whatever set for the season in the storage and then bringing our summer clothes or winter clothes here just because we don't have a lot of room left. And then in the back, we can see in the mirror there, this is the bathroom, the only bathroom. Got a nice porcelain toilet, which is nice. Never mind all those dead flies in the shower. I don't understand. But again, this thing has been sitting here for like two months now. We got a nice step in shower. We are tall. So when we get in here, I mean, thankfully there's this skylight here. So that gives us a little room, but this shower is longer this way than our current shower. So this is probably about the same size square footage wise. If I had to say maybe a little even bigger, got a couple of nice double bowl sinks with the black faucets. I love the black fixtures, even though they're a pain in the ass to keep clean. Got some cabinet space on the side here. And what's nice is everything in here is soft clothes. This one has two ACs in it. So we're gonna see how that goes. We had looked at another model, but this one, because it was a 2023, was on a really good deal. They were trying to get rid of it. So we saved a lot of money by going with this one. This was one of the first ones we wanted to look at, but we ended up liking another one from another brand. But again, this one was almost $30,000 cheaper than the other one. It is prepped for a third AC. I'm hoping I get this on the camera. Yeah. So that little panel there is for the wiring. And then basically what it does is it replaces this exhaust fan if we need a third AC to keep Keep it cool in here that was another upgrade i did for the acs i can't really show you right now maybe i'll do another video on it we got the rv air system that goes into the ac space here so in here is where your return and supply air come out these are ducted units so you can see the supply air here and then your return air comes here they're not made very well I'm in the HVAC industry. The RV air, a lot of people complain because it's styrofoam, but styrofoam won't sweat and it smooths out the air. And basically what it does is it goes up in here and it provides a ducting of sorts to push that air directly to the ducting and to your registers. Rather than what it normally is, is just a square box. And now that air is shooting straight down and it's gonna cause turbulence. So you're not getting as efficient of airflow to come out of here. I would highly recommend them. We tested it briefly and the amount of airflow that you get out of here is nice up front here we got our control panel this has everything we need to control everything in the coach these are our awnings we have two awnings outside which i can show you in a second tank heaters for all of our tanks we got the gas or electric for the water heater the water pump if we were to happen to not be on city water these are just some exterior lighting and then these are all our slide out controls up here on board we have 200 amp hours of lithium battery this is to heat them in the winter time if we need to. I installed some propane monitors, the Mopikas. So we have two 30 gallon propane tanks. Both of them are still very full. And we have a 2000 watt inverter. Some of the plugs inside here are on the inverter like this one in the kitchen. Let me show you. So we got a nice little pop-up power tower there and you can see it's an inverted outlet so that means if we turn the inverter on this outlet will be powered our power recliners are on the inverter which is nice here in the kitchen again we have a nice little oven you could probably cook a small turkey or something in there we have a three burner stove for us you'll see a lot of rv advertisements or whatever claiming a four burner stove but even in our house now with a three, full house two, of people three have, max. We, have we ever used four burners no we've never used maybe, four burners maybe twice so in five years for us that's not that wasn't really a selling point maybe two pots going at the same time so i don't know i don't know who's using four burners but i hope not because that means you got a lot of people in here and there's not a lot of room all right we're up front now this also came prepped for a generator it's already got all the wiring in it it's all ready to go the enclosures all put in already which i was super excited about until i looked at the price of generators for these things and holy moly they're expensive we have a small generator i'll show you in the back it's actually out here with it then over 
over here, we have our two batteries. This is the hydraulic leveling system. This right here controls our solar. We have 400 watts of solar panels on the roof. And then here's our battery disconnect. We could conceivably put something up here for storage. You don't want to put too much weight on that sheet metal. It's not very thick, maybe 26 gauge. What's really nice is these are all slam latch doors. This is one of our propane bottles on the side here, which I need to secure these in for travel. We have one on each side. My plan is to upgrade these to 40s and then we'll keep these also, especially for the winter. I'm sure we'll be going through a lot of propane for heat. One of our ACs is a heat pump. If you're not familiar with how heat pumps work, they're pretty good and they're efficient, but they only work when the temperature gets to about 40, maybe 35 if you're lucky. Any colder than that and they just don't work. So we'll have to switch to our furnace. Right here is the control panel. Here, I'll open it up so you can see it. That is our Lippert auto leveling system for the jacks, which is very nice, auto leveling. Then this is our pass through storage up front so here's all our city water connections here your black tank flush this is our actual water connection and if we want to winterize it which we won't be doing because we're going to be living in it. these are our low point drains if you ever need to drain all the water out of it and then your hoses will come up through here we'll go in here here's our solar charge controller by victron that is the disconnect from the solar panels right there one of the pitfalls of doing this by an airport so that plane's gone but there'll probably be another one soon so anyway here's our pass-through storage here's our inverter right up here which we unfortunately already had to have place the factory one fried itself for no apparent reason it does have future hookups for a, another inverter which my understanding is it will power the ac like one of the acs we bought a renegy 3000 watt i might end up swapping that out this is solar prep for more solar panels if we wanted to add more we're not going to be doing a lot of boondocking with this one that we know of yet we don't know what the future holds but for right now what we have is sufficient so this is our kitchen slide right here that we were just in now back here let me show you all the storage this thing has eventually i do want to swap these out because these are also very common uh, locks but that just goes up and then you can see the storage space is huge so you got the same door on the other side there we have a little bit of stuff in here so far all these spaces are also climate controlled it allows the air from inside the rv to come down here so that everything stays warm down here and doesn't freeze so i mean it goes way back there all here and then I'll show you in the back. There's a bigger one in the back. Right here's our tank valves here if we need to drain the tanks. Being stationary, what's nice is we'll be able to leave the gray tanks open all the time. Um, you never want to leave your black tank open. Don't do that. Here's our 50 amp hookup along with our water heater. This is another little door to access the storage, but I'll show you in the big door and then you'll be able to see these doors on the inside. So you can see in the back here, this is the other side of that storage. This is a much bigger area back here. There's that little door on the side and then there's one on this side too. We actually have one 10 volt power back here, which is nice. This is the generator I was telling you about. We bought this to go with our little teardrop. Now that we've swapped out some stuff and have a diesel heater, we don't take this with us anymore camping. It'll be nice to have this just in case, you know, we lose power or whatever, we can still, it's only a 30 amp, but that's enough to power, you know, the necessities inside. It's got a fully walkable roof which I will uh, take you up there in just one second. I need to climb up there to sweep off the slides so we can put them in. There's just this one stinking tree over here that we park next to. This little pine tree right here drops some needles and stuff on top. So you always want to make sure you sweep your slides off before you bring them in if you don't have slide toppers. Then on this side again, two more storage doors. That's one of our awnings there. We have the two awnings. I think one is 11 feet and the other is 14 feet, I think. We have speakers on the outside, which is nice if you ever want to sit outside and listen to music. There's three zones for the speakers. There's a speaker in the bathroom in the back. Then there's the speakers up front by the TV and then these. And we can turn each of them on however we want independently, which is really nice. You can see down underneath the Lippert leveling jacks there. So you may be wondering, what are things we did to help prep in order for us to move in and prep ourselves without having to do a whole bunch when we do move in. I went on a huge scavenger hunt and I measured everything, everything, every cabinet, pretty much every wall space. And I found all kinds of things like this to put like in the medicine cabinets, different trays and things so they don't slide around. I know that we are staying mostly mobile, but it's still just kind of the peace of mind that if we need to get up and go anywhere, we actually would have that 
flexibility. I went through and bought a whole bunch of different size of these containers. I also put shelf liners in everything. I went through and measured all the drawers. I even came in here and I measured underneath the sink. I found this cool little doodad here that expands and then you can put little shelves in there. I'll have Victor put the link down in the description. But I went and measured different size baskets to keep things as organized as possible. Baskets to fit, pretty much almost perfect. So I had a whole notebook that had all this stuff in there. So then same thing with the rug. I measured wall space here. I measured everything in here. I found these shelves on Amazon, which you can link down in the description to help with either stacking or however we're going to do it. All this has shelf liners just anything to kind of help make the move in better you know and start to feel like a home i even went through and measured all the wall space that i had to figure out what decor i was going to bring over from our home coming into the kitchen i did the same thing shelf liners everywhere containers trying to figure out what color scheme i wanted to go with in our house we have mostly blue change it to green i even went as far as measuring this to see if i could find table runners placemats i measured everything if it has something Something, something can go in it got measured the only space I couldn't measure was this big old cabinet back here I'm almost six feet tall and I still cannot reach it coming in to the kitchen I found these cute little bamboo like dish separators organizers anything to help us organize we don't know we haven't done this before so anything that we are thinking just to have an easier transition and to downsize shelf liners of course so great bamboo things so far have him put those in the link in the description for his seasonings i found this kind of lazy susan to put in there it's actually really great because these come off again there's a shelf liner <laughs> I measured all the drawers, you know, coming from a, a home to an RV, not everything is the same size, you know, as traditional. Again, measuring the walls, trying to figure out where we are going to put all the decor. I have our home, not super decorated, but decorated enough and got to pick and choose what we're going to bring over. Cabinet space, <laughs> even more shelf liners everywhere. So I pretty much just had a notebook and I wrote everything down. The pantry, cabinets, shelf space, kitchen, cabinets, shelf space. Everything got written down. I had a little bit of an open wall to decorate. I wrote and measured that as well. And then, you know, we've done other odds and ends. Kind of my thing, trying to prep before we move. Of course, there's an airplane taking off right as I start recording. So we got the inside all cleaned up a little bit, did a quick sweep, vacuumed everything up. Last but not least, I'm going to climb up on the roof and I'll kind of show you what's going on up there and then sweep off the slides, pull them in and she'll be ready to go. So let me get on the roof here. Did I just climb that ladder three times to get that shot? You're darn right I did. Okay, up on the roof here. I'm gonna be careful because I don't wanna fall off. As you can see our two AC units. That's one of the exhaust fans in the back. I added this cover because if you don't, there's no way to keep the water out in the rain. Here is our 400 watts of solar on the roof with prep back there to add more. So as you can see, this lovely pine tree has dropped needles all over the tops of our slides. You wanna get that stuff off of there before you pull them in. You don't want that stuff to get sucked in under your slides. I'm gonna sweep these off so we can pull these in and she'll be ready to go. This is the really bad one right here next to the tree here. There's a whole bird's nest up here basically. This one's gonna be really interesting because it is a lot lower than the other one. So I'm gonna have to really lean out here. My understanding is that you cannot step on them, but this ain't too bad. Definitely couldn't have done this with like a hand broom. So glad we brought the full size broom here. I'd really like to sweep out these awnings, but I don't wanna do that now that I've just swept off the slides, unless I can manage to get this stuff. Well, oh babe, look out, sorry. What are you sitting there for? Get out of there. <laughs> Whoops, I just bombed Melissa down there with all the dirt. She was sitting on the stairs. Oh, my bad, babe, sorry. Okay. Babe, you might wanna close the door. All right, 
there's all this dirt build up in these gutters here. They're little tiny gutters along the side when it rains. I want to get it all swept out of there. So there is no clogs for the upcoming rainy season that we're about to be in. We really lucked out in the sense that today and tomorrow, today is Saturday, we're moving the rig tomorrow on Sunday to its spot. It is nice and sunny and actually really warm in the sun right now. I shouldn't have worn jeans. Could have got away with shorts. But after Sunday, starting Monday, and for the foreseeable future on the 10 day there it is supposed to be super rainy and i'm talking to you and you can't even see me you're staring at the ground sorry about that yeah this is much better i tried to do this before but i didn't have a broom last one of the last times we were out here doing some prep work and this is working out much better get all this dirt and stuff out of these gutters here and of course now i want to be careful not to sweep this stuff right back into it which i just did i mean i know some of this will blow off when we move it but i don't want it to immediately just blow right back into these little troughs here so i'll try and get most of it off yeah man i am sweating over here that sun is warm it doesn't help that this roof is white so it's reflecting all the heat right back into me here yeah buddy i am sweating all right let's go up front here and do these two front slides let's see how this gutter looks well not too bad from the last time but i'm still gonna sweep it out real good oh yeah got a ton of dirt in there if you subscribe to my channel due to one of my adventure videos it seems that here recently my first part of my video on the bdr organ bdr has done pretty good and a lot of you have subscribed based off of that one but i've also seen look at me man i'm pouring sweat I've also seen that my tour of our little teardrop did pretty well. So I'm hoping those of you that have subscribed because of that are enjoying this, me sweeping the top of my camper. Thrilling content here. I don't know how we'll edit this down, but we'll see. Extreme sweeping montage. Let's get this last one here. Sweep this out real good. Oh, this side's not bad at all. So I'll just sweep off the slide here. But the next few videos will likely be kind of a series of us transitioning from our home to living in an RV. There are several factors that went into this decision that I may expound on in the future. But for now, this was not an easy decision to come to, but we also wanted to pare down. We wanted to scale down our lives. We didn't need that big house anymore. So we're looking forward to having more time not having to take care of a big house and leave more time for fun stuff and not having to worry about mowing a lawn and fixing the house. Yes, we'll still have to make repairs on the RV, but it'll be nothing compared to taking care of a house. And there's another airplane. All right, that concludes the thrilling tour and cleaning of the RV roof. So I'm gonna get down and then we'll pull the slides in. I'll show you how that works. All right, back in the cam in the camera, in the camper. I'm sweating like crazy, probably because I'm sick. If you guys are interested in a more thorough tour and like all the features, I'd be happy to do that. Let me know down in the comments, but we are gonna do the slides now, get this thing ready to go. So most of the slides are visible from the control panel there. The only one that's not is the bedroom. So I'm gonna stand back there while Melissa brings the bedroom slide in so I can watch and just make sure it's not hanging up on anything or it's gonna hit anything. So let's go in the back. That's the one thing. Well, with the mattress gone, this might be okay to get to the bathroom, but I think under normal circumstances with the mattress there, you cannot get to the bathroom. But again, we're not traveling with it right now. So that is kind of a moot point. So hit it, babe. So basically you're just gonna watch that whole bed is gonna slide in. And you just wanna watch and make sure nothing's getting hung up on anything. And that foot of that bed is gonna come almost right up to that dresser. And you're talking inches away. So that came in good. So as you can see, can't access the bathroom unless you climb over the bed, which I mean, that's fine. These doors are secured, TV is secured. So we're gonna close this door for travel. And now we can bring in the kitchen and dining room slash workstation tape uh, slide. So again, this one's gonna come almost right up to the kitchen here. The nice thing is I believe when the kitchen slide is all the way in, you can still access your fridge. But there again, that comes right up to it. Man, that worked out perfect. Look at that. We were a little worried about the oh, chairs nice. and stuff, how they would fit changing it to a desk, but man, that came out perfect. We do have them strapped underneath. These aren't gonna go anywhere regardless. 
So that worked out really good. All right, let me squeeze in over here. I'm gonna go up in the living room. We watch the kitchen slide come in now. And that's the kitchen slide. Now you can see why you wanna make sure you sweep them off. Number one, you don't want anything to get caught in these gaskets here, but that part that's outside is now inside. You don't want all that leaves and dirt and stuff coming in here. So now we are gonna do the front slides. And yes, you can still access the fridge here. So we're gonna secure some of these boxes on the couches and stuff. It should be fine. From where we have it staged to where we are parking it to live is not too far away. It's not like we're going cross country or anything. So everything should be fine. So we're just gonna secure these boxes. They shouldn't roll around or anything too much. Like I said, it's not going very far. Man, there is a fly that is just being relentless in its pursuit of something on me, maybe my sweat. Put my sunglasses back on. Probably can't see me very well with that contrast. Let's go outside. So there you go. You can see slides all in. She's ready to go to her new R new home so yeah i hope you follow along for this kind of a new chapter in our lives and see what it takes to move out of a house and into an rv i know a lot of people are doing it these days we are fully aware that we are giving up an appreciating asset for a depreciating asset you know we have weighed all the pros and cons of this decision and we are moving forward with it i think it's really going to suit kind of what we want to do for our later stages of life whether or not you think i don't look that old i'm in my <clears throat> late 40s or very soon to be late 40s so this is what's going to work for us all that's left now put the stairs up close the door he acts like he's I am old. I'm very old. My back hurts. I make weird noises, so I'm old. We hope you follow along while we uh, make this transition in our life. We're excited to see how this aids in some of the things that we want to do and, and affords us some extra time for other things than just taking care of a house all the time. It's a lot of work, as most of you know. Like and a big it, birthday trip next year? Yeah, the big, uh, well, do we want to say that? Am I allowed to say it? <laughs> I'm not allowed to say it. There's a, there's a milestone birthday coming up for Melissa next year, so we're hoping to make some kind of big trip out of it i'll let you guess <laughs> it's an even it's an even decade let's put it that way yeah anyway we're gonna end this video here we hope you follow along and as always thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video